live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Dr. John Deloney, host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, number one best-selling author of the fabulous book, uh, own your past, change your future. I was trying to remember it there for a second. Breaking me down. Open phones here at 888-825-5225. Let's start with Nick in Sacramento this hour. Hey, Nick, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? Uh, such an honor to talk to you. Um, we actually came and did our debt free screen back in uh, 2017, and uh, you've definitely changed our life, so thank you. Well, thank you. You changed your life. We just showed you how. Proud of you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I just found out on Monday that I am being laid off as of next Friday. Awesome. And yeah. Um, so we only have our mortgage, obviously, because we're debt free. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm getting uh, 12 weeks of severance. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. good. Yes. Um, and I've been with the company 19 years. Mm. So I was just. I had transferred out to California from Buffalo seven years ago, and the guy that had recruited me here, he um, is in a different state. He's out in Colorado, Mm -hmm. and he's asked me if I want to move out there for a position. Fun. And I'm trying to decide if that's a good move. I'm a manager and sales, so it would be a sales position. So what do you you make now? 77. Cool. So how much more is he going to pay you in Colorado? Uh, he said his lowest paid employee makes commission of about 110, and I'm more. I'm. They're not half the salesperson I am. So you're going to be sales or sales manager? Sales. Okay. All right. And does he have a base? No, there is no base. Hmm. Is it selling the same kind of thing you're selling now? No, it's a totally different product. Hmm. Mm-hmm. What part of Colorado? Denver. Okay. Well, Denver's a great city. Um, yeah, it is. And we have family there. We have a brother there. But mm-hmm. um, we had moved here because my wife's parents and sister and all the rest of the family is here. Mm-hmm. And how how long is it going to take you to get a book of business up and going? Is he, is he going to hand you a client list or is he going to just point you to the door and say, go get them? Yeah, the leads are generated. So how so, so I, yeah, how long how long before you start making money, dude? Um, it would be eight weeks of training, he said, and then I'd be pretty much on my own. Eight weeks of training with no pay. No, eight weeks of training um, with eight hundred dollars a week. So they have a training pay. Okay. All right. What are you selling? What would be you be selling in Denver? Uh, HVAC. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, there's nothing here that sounds bad except the straight commission part and the part where, uh, you go out with the first girl that says you look good right after your divorce. That's why I wouldn't do it. But that's just me. Yeah. You wouldn't do it? 19 years and you got kicked in the teeth and the first guy, the first person that looks at you and says you're handsome, you go running. That scares me. Okay. Uh, So I I want you to do some more shopping, uh, comparative shopping as to what you're worth in the marketplace. I'm guessing the reason I said awesome is when you've been in a job 19 years, it's it's not unusual at all for you to get a job making more when you leave there. You have 12 weeks to do that and end up with a net signing bonus because your severance turns into a signing bonus if you go ahead and get employed now. And they laid you off last Friday with no notice. Uh, They laid me off uh, Monday, and I'm employed until next Friday. Oh, okay. Okay. So two weeks' notice. Yep. So I'll get my 12-week severance, five weeks of owed vacation time, plus these two weeks that I'm working. Okay. All right. So the the equivalent of of 18 weeks. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, that's a lot of time for you to land on your feet making more than you used to make. If you want to leave Sacramento, it doesn't sound like you're tied up there or anything. And Denver's fine. I'm not down on Denver. And I don't necessarily hate the job. It's just that you haven't really looked at anything else. And I think you you take a week or two here and just see what you're worth in the marketplace. You might be really pleasantly surprised that somebody offers you a hundred and a quarter base with an upside of 200. That'd be pretty cool. 
And that would be awesome. Do do the <laughs> you're worth more than just following a job around. And what I mean by that is take a minute, and you've been doing the same thing for two decades. Take a minute just to say, hey, what do I want my life to look like in five or ten years? Where do I want to be? What do I want to be doing? What's your? Are you married, you said? Yes, I am. What, what's she saying about all this? Um, she is very confused and because she's a teacher and she's credentialed, but she has to clear a credential, and that's California, and then have to transfer everything to Colorado. It would be a hassle. Well, so, transfer it anywhere would be a hassle. Yeah, but maybe the conversation yeah. is sitting down with her and saying, okay, you and I, we have a magic moment. Somebody pushed us off a cliff. Not great, but we have a long, uh, nice parachute before we hit the ground. What do we want to do? Do we want to stay in California? She might tell you, I really want to stay here. Um, but it's hard when a husband just got just got his legs knocked out from under him. He comes home and says, all right, I found a new job. Pack it up. We're going to Colorado. It's hard for somebody to put up a roadblock in that in that scenario right because she knows you're hurting she knows you feel abandoned like these guys betrayed po- betrayed you yeah and so uh, she's not going to say no unless you ask right so sit down and say hey what do we want this to look like take her on a nice dinner how, how old are you i am 40 41 uh in Perfect. two weeks so ask yourself what do you want to be doing when you're 61 and let's aim at that and then ask yourself what has to be true for me to be doing that when i'm 61 and where do i want to be doing it because you followed the job to Sacramento. So you're in Sacramento by default, not by plan. So you have an opportunity here to reset and actually plan where you want to be. It's a tail wagging the dog a little not bit. Not where they drag you to. There you go. You don't have to corporate gypsy. You can get to pick. I pick, ta-da, wherever I want to live. And you may want to go someplace, you know, I don't know. But and they may sit down and say, you know, it'd be awesome to go have an adventure in Denver. That'd yeah. be great. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. You may circle back to that, but I wouldn't. Pick it when it's your only option on the table. I would put like five other options on the table and make that Denver deal rise to the top. I might also ask Denver Bubba to uh, cover my base for a while. If he, oh, you're easy, you're easily the best salesman that I've ever seen. Well, then you got to, you know, it's an 80 base and, uh, you know, I got to earn through that. It's a draw. I got to earn through yeah. it. Uh, you know, put your money where your mouth is if you think I'm such a stud. And I need, I need a, some help getting here too, yeah. right? Whatever, whatever yeah. you need. Yeah, well, exactly. And uh, so, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's do that. that that's I, I want some more options. I don't want you to take eight weeks over analyzing this. I want you to take eight days, mm. and I want you to go on five job interviews by Zoom or otherwise. I want you out there poking around, finding what is out there. Nick, you're probably going to be surprised in this current environment where there is a labor shortage. That you are worth more than you are being paid at the other place, and they did you a favor. That's why when you said, I got laid off, I said, awesome. It probably means an awesome new adventure and more pay if you'll mess with this just a little bit. Hang on. We're going to see you Ken Coleman's uh, Get Clear Assessment for free in his new book, number one bestseller, Paycheck to Purpose. All of that you definitely need to read in the next 24, 48 hours. This is The Ramsey Show. Y'all, there's a lot you can't control when it comes to healthcare, but there is something you should check out that can help. Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is not insurance. It is budget-friendly, biblically-based health cost sharing. That means a community of members helping share the burden of each other's healthcare costs. They help people just like you in all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Learn more today at chministries.org slash budget. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. The phone number here, 888 5225 John, these questions for humans cards are an unbelievable blockbuster hit. We can't keep them in the store. It's wild, huh? It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing, man. You have those moments when you're sitting next to somebody and you feel a thousand miles apart from them. 
I used to think that was a character issue or you weren't a good dad or a good. Now I just realized it's we, we've just grown up in a generation. We don't have those skills. And some of you all are feeling that you're a thousand miles away from people that you care about right now. So we got to put on our phones. We've substituted for deep. For God's and, sake, and put me- down our phones. <laughs> meaningful conversations for Netflix and scrolling. You deserve better relationships. And that means having better conversations. And that's why we created Questions for Humans. These are conversation starters that will help you disconnect from your screens and actually connect and have fun with people you care about. There's a deck for everyone. Dating, couples, girls night. By the way, we got some extraordinary, brilliant women to do girls night. It's not just me and my buddy sitting in a room thinking this would be hilarious. Guys night, parents and kids, friends editions and more. They've been flying off the shelves and all these will get you spending time laughing together, learning something unexpected. Pick up one, two or all of our questions for human starters and have fun together. You can go to RamseySolutions.com slash humans. It's possible that there is no human harder to talk to than a teenage child. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. <laughs> so having a having a deck of cards that you just pull one out and you ask a question, and before you know it, everybody's laughing and telling stories and uh, admitting to things they shouldn't and everything else. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. And what's been fun is I when these cards were first coming out, I would test them on my own kids. And my son was finishing fifth grade, entering into sixth grade, and now he's almost through seventh grade and his answers to the same questions are different now uh-huh. and it's been fun it's been cool and uh we we're, they're they're all they're growing with us and so anyway I, i'm loving it yeah. i use them in my house is all I, is, is is the best uh advertisement i could give for them yeah and we can't keep them i mean we order them and they just go out of here like crazy so ramseysolutions.com slash humans Questions for Humans cards in the store at ramseysolutions.com be sure and check them out tina's in fort lauderdale hi tina how are you Hi, guys. I appreciate your show. I'm good. Thanks. Um, my, my question is around um, using a HELOC to put 20% down on a new home. Nope. And then selling the current home right after closing on the new home. Oh, that home. I got confused. Okay. Yeah. So you're going, to close so- on, you're going to close on another property before yours closes. I, I would like to. So um, that's pretty dangerous. I, I just, yeah. Okay. What happens if it doesn't close? You got two house payments, and you know what Correct. you become after that? We call them a motivated seller, who sells their house cheap because mm-hmm. they get stuck. Mm-hmm. Three times that happened to me. Whoa! You uh, didn't learn after the first one. No, 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 no. Three times I have gone to closing, or within a week of closing, the deal has fallen through. Oh, when I'm trying to sell a property. Oh yeah, yeah. I see. Okay. And, yeah, um, we're going to close yeah, on the just, second one after the first one closes. Mm-hmm. Then we use cash. Yeah, I just did that. I just did that. I am in my second real estate property now. Um, and when I f- sold the first home to get into this new home that I live in now, um, it was really stressful for me to not have anywhere to live, like in the interim. I happened to just... You know what's more close- stressful? Two house payments. Yeah, two mortgages. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, okay, how, yeah. how long of a gap are you talking here? Um, I mean, I would immediately, like when I would close, I would put the, you know, the original home up for sale. I guess my idea of doing it that way is because, you know, I um, this closing on this new, this is, the sale that I did just now, it was really stressful for me, the move. I was, I need to find a home. Where am I going to live? Um, you know, and I would have preferred to be able to secure a home for me first. Um, so take you know, a, so then, write a contract on the other, on the property you're purchasing contingent on the sale of yours and set the closings okay. up on the same day. But if yours yeah. doesn't, if your current house doesn't close, you don't close on the new one. Because you're going to end up with two house payments in a market that has slowed down with higher interest rates. And uh, you're going to be calling me two years from now going, I did the dumbest thing. I got two house payments. It's killing me. Can you help me, Dave? Okay. And then aside from that, so what if I could take out a HELOC enough to pay for a a home cash? (laughs) Um, because I have quite a bit of, well, a, a, enough equity um, in my current home. I, listen, here, here's what, Tina, you, just, <laughs> you, you be you, okay? You go be you. That's what you need to Don't do. Don't take out a HELOC ever. 
Ever. Period. Ever. Sell your stinking house and move and quit talking to me about stress. You're trading one kind of stress for another because you don't perceive the risk that after 30 years of doing what I do, I've seen people step in it up to their knees, and I'm begging you not to do that. I'm begging you. All right. Trevor's up. Trevor's in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Hi, Trevor. How are you? Hey, Mr. Ramsey. I'm doing well. How are you? Better than I deserve. How can we help? So I'm on baby step one. And there's some maintenance, some urgent, some petty that needs to be done on my wife and I's car. Petty. Should I go ahead? Yeah, What's petty, petty? Just small stuff. Uh, just small stuff. What? Like a filter, a uh, cabin filter, and an engine air filter. It's kind of small stuff. It's, it's like 30 and then the bucks. Lighter, lighter yeah, so that's that's my question. That is, goes in your budget. Just go that just goes in your budget. That goes in your budget. Okay. And an air filter is gotcha. not petty. It's one of those things that your engines need to to, to run. Yeah, but it's 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 a petty amount of money. Uh, gotcha. There you go. Yes, right. Exactly. I don't know. The cabin yeah. air filters are a couple of million dollars these days. Yeah, I'm thinking not. But yeah, yeah. I the, would um, not. Yeah. But like the you got to uh, you have to, you know you're going to change while you're doing baby step one, two, and three, and you're living on a tight budget, you're probably going to change your oil and buy gas for the car. Mm -hmm. And you're probably going to put a filter in it. So that's all just part of your budget, though. It doesn't really interrupt it, uh, other than it slows down the amount of extra cash you have to throw at debt. Anything you spend on obviously can't go towards the debt. But you have to buy food. You have to pay the electricity. I mean, you have to keep the car operating. And so some basic stuff like that's fine. But, yeah, uh, you know, I want to do a petty home remodel. I want to paint three rooms. No. You wait on the room. You wait on painting your rooms until you get out of debt. Or I want to jack my car up or get new shocks or something. Hang in there. Yeah, I want, I want new wheels. No, your spinners will wait. Or like James, he put a special thing, muffler on his car, so it's Did really, really loud. But it, no, he didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes a loud noise when he drives down the road. Oh, mine just came that way from the factory. So <laughs> uh, it says redneck on the We can sticker. hear you coming, man. It says redneck on the window sticker, but there you go. If somebody in the parking lot says, hey, is Dave here? Everyone just gets real quiet. Yeah, we, there we it is right you. there. Yeah. A new Raptor has got a great voice. It really does. Open phones at 888 825 Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. John, um, let's talk through for in, in the one minute we got going into the break. The, what causes someone, from a psychological perspective, to have a stressed-out situation like the lady a few minutes ago uh, on the double move thing? She didn't want to move. She wanted had a stress stressful move and she's trading that for another kind of stress and ignoring the risk her body put a, a gps pin in the distress she had last time and said let's never do this again and at any cost at any cost and so it's the stress she knows stress she remembers the devil i know and then there's this other amorphous thing that eh, probably won't happen except you and i wouldn't have a job if it didn't happen all the time and so it's 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 why people go gamble and the gamble and the gamble and the gamble They've been broke, so they don't want to be that. But Because they one time. One time. It hit. Yep. Yeah, that, that time. God, Sharon put a quarter when we were like 20-something years old. We were on this little horrible cruise line. Put a quarter in a slot machine and won like 130 bucks in quarters. <laughs> they were going everywhere. <laughs> she put $600 in to those machines before we got off that boat. Trying, <laughs> trying to do it again. That's exactly what it is, isn't it? It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's 25 or 28 years ago, and I've never let her forget it. And it works in the reverse with pain, right? So yeah, just don't do it, man. Just don't do it. This is The Ramsey Show. a home is one of the biggest decisions of your life. You need a partner like Churchill Mortgage. Churchill is one of the highest rated lenders in the country and they're Ramsey trusted because they do what's right for you. Churchill works with you to build a mortgage the Ramsey way. One that doesn't bust your budget, sets you up for financial success and helps you get out of debt faster. Go to churchillmortgage.com today and get started.
Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage, Todd and Rebecca are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Doing great. How are you? Better than we deserve. Where do you guys live? We live in the panhandle of Nebraska, known as Scott's Bluff. All right. Welcome to Nashville. That's a bit of a haul down here. Yeah, 1,200 miles one way. Wow. Amazing. Well, welcome. How much debt have you guys paid off? Paid off $62,000 in 13 months. Wow. And your range of income during that year? We started off at uh, 101000 and towards the end, we finished at 125. Good for you. What do you guys do for a living? I'm an elementary teacher. Awesome. What, what grade do you teach? Fifth. All right. And I'm, a, <laughs> I'm all kinds of things, but I am a maintenance supervisor in a small uh, school district south of Scotts Bluff. Ah, okay. And start hitting on one of the teachers, huh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well she, played, Todd. Well she's, played. she's the reason why we moved out there. We're originally from Wyoming, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, My it bad. was an underhand pitch, dude. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what kind of debt was the 62000 Well, we were pretty normal, Dave. Uh, we had car loan, student loan, credit card, medical debt. I mean, we had just about everything you could have. Absolutely. How long y'all been married? Five years now. Okay, you sure. Lose track after. A yeah. So, <laughs> Y'all looked at each other like this I much don't fun. Know. This much fun. How, how, the uh, <laughs> so after about three years of marriage, you look up and say something's got to change. How'd you get on this Ramsey stuff? Oh boy. <laughs> well, it's it's oh kind of boy. a funny story, Dave. I hope you don't get offended by it. <laughs> I'm very seldom offended. Um, you uh, you came across the radio station there in town, and uh, your commercial said, you know, getting. Getting money on on credit is bad and debit's good, you know. And I thought, man, what is this southern man going to tell this midwestern man how to spend his money? And sure enough, I was out there working in the bus barn on Friday night, 6 o'clock, trying to get work done. And uh, I started saying, well, you can get out debt. You can get out debt. And just like uh, Beetlejuice, you just kind of started appearing all (laughs) over the place. I mean, it was nuts. The next day, my dad comes up to me and, and he goes, "You know what that crazy Dave Ramsey man wants you to do? He wants you to make it. He wants you to take your bank account down to a thousand dollars." I thought, "Oh man, that is way yeah. too crazy for me." Two days later, I looked it up, found FPU, came home to my wife, and I said, "Hey, you know, I'm going to spend a hundred bucks on or whatever it is on this class to get us out of debt." And uh, Long story short, I ended up having a 10-hour round trip down to Kansas to pick up some equipment for the school, and I listened to every single video of FPU there and back, and I came home that night ready to go. I was Uh-oh. I was all in, man. Rebecca, he didn't take you on the ride. He did not. <laughs> he did not take you on the ride. <laughs> nope. I, I could see this coming a mile away. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we... You're that guy, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's how it works, I guess. He brought home so Tupperware, Rebecca. he brought home Avon, and now he's got Dave Ramsey. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So what did you say, Rebecca, your nutty, your nutty husband? I was a little concerned about him yeah. at first. Um, <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> I had no idea about anything that he was talking about. And so when he bought it and said, let's watch this together, I said, oh, an activity to do together. That's wonderful. And I started watching it, and to be very honest with you, Dave, I was not into it at first. I was very scared to take that risk Mm. because I always wanted a safety blanket. Sure. But I stuck with it. Mm -hmm. I trusted my husband and the things that he was doing, the research Mm -hmm. he was doing, and it definitely paid off in the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys leaned into it together, but it it was a a little little weird start there. Yeah, it was. Yeah, okay. That's fair. That's (laughs) fair. She had to pick between two nutty guys, and she went with that one. Yeah, well right. done. Well Good done. Choice. Thank you. Good well, choice. Good choice. <laughs> you know, we. How does it feel to be free? Oh, it, it's a, it's fantastic. It's life changing. I, I can't imagine anything better for our family. Um, that this is the life I wanted to live for a long time. I came from a family that never believed in debt, but had a hard time getting out of debt. You know, and uh, now that we're here, I never going back again you, you guys live in a part of the country that i mean it, it the, the whole farming cycle is all, is is all debt so everybody you live with and work with live in yeah. this thing yep. yeah we are surrounded by debt i mean when you got a three hundred thousand dollar tractor and somebody that's making thirty five thousand a year right i mean that's that's what we're surrounded by and a lean on your thousand dollar 
pro- I mean, thousand acre property. I mean, that's a. I mean, your neighbors can't breathe, right? Oh yeah, it's yeah. It, it's kind of heartbreaking when you look mm-hmm. at all the poor guys around mm-hmm. us that are trying to supply us food and. They're just straddled with all these loans, you know. Yeah. They're struggling. It's hard. They feed the world. Exactly. But they're, but they're, right. they're amazing farmers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they work like crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Way to go, you two. All right. Now that you did it, what are the keys out there to pay off 62000 in 13 months? What do, you, what do you do to get out of debt? For me, it's discipline and perseverance. Mm-hmm. You have to be willing to do the hard things to get the return in the end. Mm -hmm. I had to be very disciplined with my budget. Mm -hmm. I had to, oh, I have a little bit of money here. I can move it over here and and go get my nails done. No big deal. Mm -hmm. Well, as you can see, my nails aren't done. So (laughs) me and Dave were just talking about that before. (laughs) Our nails nails are looking rough. Deloney, (laughs) Deloney, it's been a while for him. Well, if you have it in your budget, then (laughs) absolutely. It's not easy, but it's it's worth it in the end. Yeah, the, the yeah. discipline, the perseverance, yeah. and because yeah. of the decisions we made. Yeah, if you live like no one else, later you can live and give like no one else. There's right. a price to be paid to win. Exactly. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, we yeah. we had a couple prices to pay. I mean, three weeks after I took FPU, I went home and sold my GTO, my Ooh. race car. Four months later, I came home again. I told my wife, "Look, if we want this to go faster, we're going to have to get rid of the SRT8 Jeep." For an Impala, yeah, that was a hard blow to the ego. Wow. Hard then you blow. knew he was serious, huh, Rebecca? <laughs> I did. I what did. did that, what did the GTO sell for? Uh, we ended up selling it for about thirty-nine thousand. Goodness gracious! Yeah. yeah, it was one of only seven hundred in the world, so yeah. it was really hard to get rid of. But yeah. um, you chose your family's future. That's right. Yeah, I, yeah. I figured. You know what? When I'm out of debt, I can go get whatever car I want, drive whatever I want, and do whatever I want. So yeah. So let me just help you people out there in America. If a guy sells his thirty-nine thousand dollar GTO for the good of his family's future, he's what's known as a man, <laughs> not a boy. <laughs> that, that's very manly. Thank Pretty you. impressive. Thank you. Pretty impressive, dude. I'm so proud of you. So cool to meet you guys. You're amazing. Yeah, you too. Oh, thank you. Very, very well done. We try. And you, you brought the kid. <laughs> you brought the kiddo with you. Uh, and let's bring the kid, child up. Age and name and all that stuff. Give us an introduction here. Yeah, this is uh, Malia May. She's two years old. All right, Malia May. Very good. Hey, we've got the uh, Live and Give bundle for you, which is the number one bestseller, the Baby Steps Millionaire's book on your next step where you'll be a millionaire, and then of course. Total Money Makeover book, which you guys have plugged into, and the Financial Peace University you plugged into, so you can give some of these things. You can live with some of these things. They're gifts for you to say, thanks for coming down here. Very, very cool. Very well done. I'm so proud of y'all. Thank you. Thank Good you. work. Thank Good you. work. You are heroes. Man, people that make decisions like that, selling that car, that's that was not an easy call, man. <laughs> that, that's pretty serious right there. That's that's impressive. Very impressive. All right, Todd, Rebecca, and Malia from Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. Sixty two thousand paid off in thirteen months, make it one oh one to one twenty five. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. You ready, Malia? Three, two, one. We're, We're debt free. That's amazing. You know, first time I ever saw that was many decades ago. I was sitting in a small group in Financial Peace University. I was leading the group, and this old boy from Kentucky came in, and his, he was a big old guy like that guy. His wife was a tiny little thing. Tears started running down her face, and she said, I've never felt as loved by my husband in our 10 years of marriage as I do right now. And I said, what? He sold this unbelievable knife collection he had for $10,000 to get his family out of debt. And it was one of his most prized possessions. And he put his family ahead of that. Of stuff. And boy, she felt loved. Wow. It was pretty impressive. This is The Ramsey Show.
Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. If you're a new listener, and we know there's a bunch of you based on our ratings and rankings out there, and you don't know what we're talking about half the time around here, if you want to learn about uh, the inside talk, like baby steps and debt snowballs and all that kind of stuff, hit RamseySolutions.com. Click on the Get Started button. It's a free process. We'll help you identify where you are and what your next best steps are, and you can join in this whole conversation. Get started. Free service at RamseySolutions.com. Ray is in Boston. Hi, Ray. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Ray. uh, 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 Hey, Dave. Thank you so much for having me on. How's it going today? Better than we deserve, sir. How can we help? Yeah, so I'm wondering, um, yeah, so I've been listening to you for a um, a few months now i was just wondering if it, if it was a smart idea to uh to dip into my savings to pay off all the debt i want just you know rip the band-aid right off generally yes why would you not do that just because uh you know um in in, in the industry I, i'm in right now is going through a lot of layoffs so i'm just weary of just like you know should i um just get rid of all my uh, you know get rid of a big portion of my savings and, uh, what if i get laid off in like two months or something what industry are you in uh, tech. What do you do? I'm a data uh, software slash data engineer. You can get a job in 20 seconds. Yeah, but... If uh, big, yeah, t- if uh, big uh, tech uh, lays you off, that's what's known as a blessing. And there's people hiring. Yeah. I mean, I got I could hire 10 data engineers this moment. I, I got, I, I got, we got job postings right now. And I'm not the only one. There's a short... Man, you... you you're sitting in the catbird seat. You can get a job in 30 seconds if you're any good. Are you good? Yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all good. There's that yeah. Boston. Yeah. Yeah. And humble. Yeah. yeah and so, there's yeah. that Boston. Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, yeah, you're fine. No. I mean, then let, have they all. announced that your particular job is going to be alleviated in the next six weeks? No. No. They no. Then quit whining yeah, and worrying no, no. about what might happen and go live your life. Yeah. So my question is, so I, um, so I actually have a tw- um, yeah, so I make about a, a one thirty five a year, but and I have a twenty percent bonus coming up. Should I just take that bonus and just? Yeah, you also up, have you also have money in savings. Right. Yeah, but I have about eighty five thousand saved up. Okay, and so um, how much is your bonus? Uh, bonus is about uh, um, after taxes. I'm not sure, but it's about twenty five percent of my uh, twenty percent of my entire salary. Okay, so about another twenty five grand or thirty grand. Yeah. On top of eighty five. Yeah. Am I getting this right? So you got like one hundred twenty-five thousand yeah. dollars cash laying around. How much debt have you got? I got, I got about twenty-three thousand. Oh, Ray, good Lord! What? It's a shame about Ray. Poor Ray. Pay it off. Poor Ray. He's only got a hundred thousand left over after he paid off his debt. How's he going to make it? I don't know how he's going to make it. He's going to starve. Raymond, he's be pay homeless. off your debts today. Ray, do you hear what you just said? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just very sort of like, I, like, I, I, like, like all the layoff news. Uh, okay, happen. listen, I, you're using your I'm emotions to make financial decisions. Yeah. Because your math is sucks. You have $125,000 yeah. and $25,000 in debt. And so after you pay off all your debt and you're 100% debt free, this is not even a question you should have to ask. Yeah. So you're living up in the worry zone. Dale Carnegie, one of the great minds of a, Another century said that 80% of what we worry about never occurs. And the percentage of the 20% that we worry about, we don't have any control over anyway. So quit spending all your energy and burning calories worrying. You spend a lot of time fretting. It's good to get out a piece of paper and just do the facts of your friends exercise. If you pay this debt off, you have no bills. You have 80% of an annual income. So you got, what, 10 months of, of pay in cash. You're fine. Too much. You're good. And gosh. Still. Wow. Yes. Jeff. Jeff, 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 Jeff is in Atlanta. Hi, Jeff. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, good afternoon, Dave. Good afternoon, John. Um, my question is a, is a little bit different than the prior prior caller. I'm looking to make sure I'm not being so detached and only looking at the numbers. Um, the opposite so end. Okay, I got you. <laughs> I'll see what you're saying, Jeff. Okay, no, that's okay. You can do it. You can do either one. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just tell you the truth either way. So, what's up? How can we help? That, that's what I'm, I'm good with. So, a couple of years ago, I went through a, a divorce, and I've got three kids caught in the middle. Mm. Uh, I wound up getting remarried last year, but my ex-wife moved about an hour away. So, 
we went back to the court system. The court system ultimately just decided that even though I retained the marital home so that the kids could stay in their schools, that there's no reason why she's not allowed to leave. Um, so there for a while we were doing 50, 50 and I'm taking me about an hour and a half to get the kids to school in the morning and then another hour to get home. Ultimately, this is not sustainable. It's not good for the kids to be in the car that long. Not good so for anybody. Question, yeah. My, my financial question is, do I sell my home that I have at a 3% rate and buy something on that side of town so I can see my kids more, even though it's going to increase my monthly expenses so after the court cases. My where's your where's your work? I work from home. Oh, okay. What about your new spouse? Are you married? Remarried? I am. I am remarried. Uh, she would then have, you know, she 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 works ten minutes down the road now. So if we move, she'll be commuting an hour to work. But so it's kind of. I don't. I don't know what to do because basically, if I sold this house, about halfway in between. Put, yeah, halfway in between. Here's the deal. Ask yourself right. this question: What's the percentage rate your kids are worth? Well, look, my kids are worth worth anything. anything. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. right. Yeah. So, so does it and, matter and, that the interest rates are six percent? It's, it's. I don't care what the interest rate doesn't is. Doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm going to be around my kids, and it doesn't. It doesn't even matter financially. Right. Mathematically, it's not that big a deal. But what you because what here's the thing: you're not going to prosper financially maritally or as a dad in, in a situation that's not sustainable. And so when sure. you get yourself in a place that's sustainable, you'll make more money. You'll have a better quality life. And so landing 30, drop a GPS pin 30 minutes between each two of these things. So 30 minutes to the kid, 30 minutes to, for your new wife to work. And uh, we got a pretty decent life now. Uh, that's not that unusual commute. Crap in Atlanta. That's a short commute. <laughs> that's, my, that's my commute right. to the office every day. And I'll tell you this. She would have to be a very special human being to be 10 minutes from her house, have this new life, and then suddenly have to commute an hour for what will the, – the quiet voice in her mind will be for somebody else's kids. That's going to be tough long term. So keep that – what Dave said, it's really important, the sustainability, sustainability. Yeah, the relational sustainability. Right. The physical sustainability, that commute is just uh, overwhelming. So, yeah, I'm probably moving closer to them. I don't know exactly what that looks like in your situation, but we're moving that direction uh, to where we can do this. And here's the thing, too. Um, I don't know how – I didn't ask how old these kids are, but I'll bet you in 10 years most of this problem has gone. Right, and that's when, when, when parents get divorced and they are asking questions about their kids, I always tell them, you just switched from an annual game to a decade game. You're playing a long connection. You want your kids to be able to look back and say, that guy, my dad, never stopped pursuing me. My mom never – I don't care what the court said. I don't care we have a crazy parent. I've got a box full of letters under my bed that my dad wrote me every single week. Yeah. My dad always – he sold his house and moved out to long, see me. You're playing long game. Playing long game. Yeah, it's all long game. It's then. a 10-year ten, ten ten year and, game. And, and also, I mean, you know, like stuff like child support That's right. and stuff like, you know, your need to be physically present in their life on a – quasi-daily as basis. As you can, yeah. It, it, when they're 18, you don't even have that option because they leave. They're gone. Right. <laughs> so, uh, most of the time, they, yeah. or they should. And so, yeah, <laughs> no, that, there's that. So, yeah, that's, um, yeah, you, you know you've got to do that. And, and you're not being cold and detached. You're just trying to be wise. This is There's so many things pulling at you, Jeff. I mean, you've got a new wife that you want to honor and serve. You, you've got this... Um, the next wife that bailed on the on the agreement y'all made. Yeah, and the court that went along with it, and you got you need to try to do your job and eat. She's the new wife's got to do her job. I mean, there's so many things pulling at you here, and you were not a single part of your question was selfish. Nope, good it was, guy. It was all duty and service, which means you're a great guy. Yeah, so you're you're right on track, and you're not being cold or calculated. It's not an interest rate thing. Do make the move; it'll be worth it. You'll probably make it up in gas savings. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, 
Hey, it's Dr. John Deloney. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thank you for joining us, America. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today, author of the book, Own Your Past and Change Your Future, a number one bestseller. And we're here to answer your questions about your life and your money. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Well, John, the um, the crypto um, gossip mill mill continues. Oh, thank so goodness, man. Apparently Whew. now um, it's not much real an attorney news out has there. gathered up clients who are seeking $5 billion in damages from FTX celebrity endorsers. In other words, a celebrity went on and told you to buy crypto from FTX, which went bankrupt, went belly up because uh, the guy was running a Ponzi scheme, basically. Like, we didn't know that about crypto. But anyway, Tom Brady, his ex-wife Giselle, actor Larry David, Shark Tank star Kevin O'Leary, and NBA legend Shaquille O'Neal. Five billion dollars. I guess um, Matt Damon's um, thing of... Fortune favors the bold. That was a that different one, that, uh, that was company. A, that was a different company. Yeah, yeah, that one didn't get. He's not. Yeah, I don't understand this suit. I'd probably have to learn more about what Moskowitz is trying to do. I, I didn't know you could sue an endorser. You can sue anybody for anything in hopes you can hassle them into giving you money, even if you're going to lose the lawsuit. Right. Because these companies don't, these people don't want to spend five years in court with this ambulance trace chasing moron. And go through all their... And go through all their everything that they've ever, every underwear drawer they've ever right. un unpacked and in their discovery. Socks and their shoes and they don't want to go through all of that, even though the guy hasn't got a chance of winning. Because endorsing something when you're a celebrity that you know nothing about has been done since time began. They're not liable for the FTX crash. So, but hey, that's an absolute hogwash. I mean, I, I'm not a fan of FTX. I'm not a fan of crypto. I'm certainly not a fan of Bankman Fried or Freed, whichever way you want to say it. And uh, <laughs> Fried is my preference. And yeah, but the uh, in, in so many ways, yeah. Uh, but but, but you know, hey, the, I, the whole thing is a scam. But come on, dude. Here's what's important. Tom Brady might be stupid for endorsing it, but he's not liable. He's not a criminal, yeah. That's just dumb. I think the, the important part of the story, the most important thing that all of us need to put into our pocket and not forget, is that when it came down to it, only one celebrity said no. I, I, and it's James' favorite celebrity of all time, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift asked FTX about its, the legality of what they were selling. They offered her $100 million. She to walked away it. from it. And she walked away. Yep. She thought it was a scam. I, you got to love it. I can just see her like writing a song in her bedroom. like She's writing her diary, and then she picks up the phone, and she just says, Hey, can you tell me that these are not unregistered securities? And the FTX guys were like, We'll call you back. And then she went back to singing her this song. This is according to the attorney who's doing the <laughs> lawsuit. <laughs> So I'm not saying Taylor didn't 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 turn down the endorsement because it was scummy. I cannot hear her saying, "Can you tell me these are not unregistered Oops. securities?" I'm calling absolute bull on that. <laughs> that is not a phrase that would come out of Taylor Swift's mouth. Okay? I don't. I don't think you're a true Swifty, Dave. Unless, I think that's, the, that's no, what we're I'm hearing. Not, I, I, I am not a hater. I like Taylor. I mean, I, I'm not. It's not a music thing, but I mean, I don't. I, she's a Nashville originally came up here. We all watched her grow her career. I think, I'm not a hater. I, but I mean. You know, I, can you tell me this isn't illegal, maybe? Would she say that? Maybe. Unless somebody put this phrase in her mouth and said, you need to ask them this. Sure. But this guy's, this guy's full of it. She did not say that. She did turn them down, though, to her credit. Yeah. We'll give her big time stars for that. $100 million bucks 
sponsorship for the tour. Uh, walks, before negotiations broke down last spring, sources told the Financial Times with the FTX then-billionaire CEO, Bankman Fried, uh, intimately involved in the talk. So he's sitting with Taylor. He's trying to get her to sign He's up. trying to get Taylor to sign up here for 100 million dollars of course he was going to pay her in crypto okay. <laughs> that's probably why <laughs> i'm kidding mm, maybe not but anyway yeah ah hey kudos to taylor james kudos i think you, you should be proud of your favorite singer songwriter yeah like she did go. good when the chips were down she did good yeah well i um hey I, well, honestly because <laughs> the the other guys i kind of i can't even accuse them of being sellouts no like I don't, I don't know that they just gave a, you know, that they just took money. I think they actually believed in the crypto stupid stuff, yeah. and actually thought it was a good idea to invest in the crypto stupid stuff. And so they said, yeah. I mean, like I don't think Shaq is a is a shill for any. You can buy him for any amount of money to sell anything. I really don't believe that about. No, him. and and you and I both people come pitch us and say, hey, you want to. You want to advertise this product? And I, I had a meeting today with somebody walking me through. Here's what this looks like, and here's what we're about, and here's what we do. And we just say no yeah. if we don't like it. Or if I mean, we don't like it. But if I say if yes. I, if I wouldn't sell it, yeah. if I wouldn't try to talk my own relative, my best friend, into doing it, then I'm not going to tell you guys to do it. That's right. That's our rule at Ramsey. We don't endorse stuff. But these guys, honestly, they they probably bought some of they this probably stuff. probably told their friends, get in on yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. So, I, you know. It's a strange lawsuit, but... It's a it's a bogus lawsuit. Once again, Taylor Swift. I'm just saying. Top of the heap. Moskowitz. Adam Moskowitz. And he's out in the news. He's doing interviews. <laughs> he's that kind of attorney. <laughs> the kind of attorney, instead of having a case, he get, tries to try it in the court of public opinion. Yeah. Yeah, this is what's known as a glorified ambulance chaser right here. Uh, you know. So companies, basically, if y'all don't know, most companies just cave. You sue them. They just go, oh, God, I don't want to be tied up in court. And people do, too. Mm -hmm. And you know who didn't do that the other day? Mm -hmm. Paltrow. She took the fake ski accident guy oh, all, the she went to court. The, all the way to ground, baby. Yeah. You know what he got? Embarrassed. That's yeah. what he got. Embarrassed. And now now they're going after him for her attorney's fees. Of course. And absolutely. I hope, I hope they get them. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, because he thought he could just bully a celebrity. And that instead of going through the hassle... That, the, that you bully the celebrity, they'll give you money even though you know you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And hit that guy, you know, he, he knows. I didn't know much about it. I was just surprised that she showed up at the in court. There, there, this is what, when, when people out there uh, in the think tank things and all that say, we need tort reform. That's what they mean. Is these bogus butt attorneys suing people that are in the spotlight and in, knowing that they, even though the lawsuit holds absolutely no water at all, zero basis to win they think they can just do it enough that uh, that you're just going to write a check and mm -hmm. occasionally run into one that won't hmm. and that uh, paltrow took them all the way to ground good for her good for her so that, that's how it's done so yeah that's i sorry i we endorse stuff for a living we are not if, if the company that we endorse unbeknownst to us does something wrong we are not financially or legally liable we believe in it. We don't endorse it. We check it out. We don't endorse it if we don't. We we do our best. We're not good. We're not. We're not shills. And I don't think these guys are shills. And I think this guy just he thinks he's going to hassle these celebs into giving him money. Five billion dollars. I'm a big dog attorney. No, you're not. You're a freaking ambulance chaser. I'll just say, Taylor Swift was right again. Yeah, there it is. Who knew? Who knew? There it is. James knew. She's James. A, she's a futurist. A prophetess. This is the Ramsey Show. We've been doing business at Ramsey for more than 30 years. By now, we're a well oiled machine, but it wasn't always that way. Yes, we've always had a vision, always had determination, and a drive to help people, but what we didn't have was one central place to access all our numbers so that we could get further ahead or quickly see when we needed to pivot. We were always jumping back and forth between different systems and spreadsheets. So when NetSuite by Oracle helped us wrangle our revenue, inventory, expenses, and more into one place, it was a game changer. And NetSuite's number one cloud financial system can help your business gain the same visibility because businesses thrive on timely data. 
and NetSuite's real-time analytics can help your business have immediate access to your numbers daily so you always know where you stand and you can move quickly. So go to NetSuite.com slash Ramsey today and set up a free product tour. That's NetSuite.com slash Ramsey. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Virginia is with us. Virginia is in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, Virginia. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So I'm um, heartbroken about acting uh, not so nice to my boyfriend because I have resentful feelings about a situation with his family and I'm struggling with feeling guilty about feeling resentful and then I'm, you know, kind of like saying things that are just not nice and it's it's putting a strain on our relationship and it makes me just want to give up, but I don't want to give up because I love him so much and yeah, that's why I'm calling. So what's the, what's the situation? So... Um, uh, he supports his household, but his parents moved in with him a few years ago to help after um, a devastating divorce. And now, you know, we've been dating for like over a year and, and things are good, but, you know, kind of like they're going to be permanently there. And he feels obligated to continue supporting them because, you know, they kind of sold everything to go help them. And I just don't know if we were talking about marriage and starting life together. And I don't know if he'll ever really be able to let go of that and be focused on a household we would create together, you know, cause he would maybe let's say if he moved out and maybe charge them rent or something, but it wouldn't cover, you know, any of the expenses. So most, so about, all oh, of, oh, oh, let's, let's yeah. stop talking. Let's stop talking about him. Okay. What kind of life do you want? Do you, it, it, let me, let me tell you this before you answer it. It's okay to say, I want to be married to somebody and nobody else lives in our house for a while. I want to fill in the blank. Which, by the way, would be pretty normal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, what do you want? I want that marriage picture where it's two people and it's even if it's a blended family that it's, you know, cause that's what we both, we both have kids, you know, that we'd be bringing into it and that's hard enough without everything else. And, and I really, we each don't by ourselves make a lot of money and it's not about the money, but it's just, if we were to combine forces, we could really get ahead and change our family tree. And, and it's just, so you know um, what you want. Exactly. That's what I want. And, and I think he's said he's willing to, you know, let's say even if he lets them sit, stay living there at his house, but it would still be kind of like he'd probably still have to support a lot, you know, because they can't really afford to pay. Did, did you get hurt in your, in your first marriage? Yes. You're not done there. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get back out there, quote unquote, you found somebody, you like this guy, you've started making plans and thinking about tomorrow, which you haven't done in a while. Mm-hmm. And your body is saying, hey, we've done this before and it almost got us killed. <laughs> and the way you're trying to solve that angst and that fear is by controlling every future variable down the road. And what I want to tell you is you can't do that. You're going to make yourself nuts. Because you could marry somebody and two months in, it's... Y'all have this nice small little house and you're, and you are changing your family tree. And then his dad passes away and mom has to go like life just happens or he gets hit by a butt. Like this is life. The difference between you dating right now is, you know, up front what you're, what you're walking into. And so you're going to have to, as scary as it is, put yourself out there to get hurt again. That's the only way relationships work. You got to go all in or say, here's what I want. Here's what I need. And if you can't do that, if you're not interested in that, that's going to hurt like bloody hell. And 
That's what grief is. And then we're going to pick up, pick it up, and we're going to go figure out something else. Mm-hmm. You're trying to do it all. You can't. I can hear it in how you talk. It's all just chaos in there, right? So with him comes a package. You can't control the package. He's got kids. He's got parents in his house. You can't control that. And he's got values that say, I do this, and I do this, and I do this, and I'm going to do this. It's, mm-hmm. in, it's in there, too. It's kind of obvious where this is going to go. So you're, you're either going to sign up for that and be happy about it, or you're going to say, you know, that's not the picture I've got. I don't want to do that. Now, I want to be fair to him. Have you sat down and been very clear? I am not interested in moving forward in this relationship if this relationship is going to include X, Y, and Z? Um, I think that, like, the details maybe haven't been ironed out where we got that far yet to talk about what it would actually look like if we were to try to start a home together. Um, I think he kind of more says, don't worry about it. It'll all work out. Nope. And I'm wanting more. No, it won't. (laughs) won't. No, it won't. Nope. Because his didn't work out. So uh, I'm confused. They moved in with him to help him after the divorce, but now they're the ones that need help? That's Yeah, that's kind of like my issue is I feel like, well, they didn't, you know, they were fine before. And I know they missed out on all that, you know, house boom and everything, whereas if they had kept their house, they could have had a lot of equity. And then they missed out on all that. So now they really don't have anything. So they did really give up everything to, you know, and they're probably just well, so, living So on. the house that he's in, he owns, and they're mm-hmm. living with him. Can yeah. He, can he just give them that house? I think that would be beautiful, and essentially, he probably, in in effect, would be. But he's... no, I, I don't. I wouldn't do it in effect. I would just say you're on your own. You stand on your own two feet. You're like grown people now. And here's your house. Here's a house. I'm marrying her. I'm moving into her place. And y'all, y'all, awesome. y'all got to figure it out because you're going to pay the bills over here. Right, right, and that's like that would be so great. I just, I, I don't know. It, I mean, that sounds like a good. Do plan. they have jobs? N- no, they. How old are, are these people? About 75. Okay, and they have no money. Right. So they, I mean, they, sold they, didn't move, they didn't move in with him to help him. They moved in with him because they were broke. I don't know about I, that. Well, I'm I, telling you, I mean, they, they didn't go from rich to broke while living in a free house. I think, yeah, maybe they worked before, but then they were able to retire when they moved in kind of thing. And that's good. I'm glad they can do that. It's just that now I, I do struggle thinking, wait, like you said, wait, they didn't need help before, but now they're dependent but, on you. But here, you know? here, here's the big picture. You are spending a lot of time in his head and in their head. Get out. Mm-hmm. Get out of their heads. Mm-hmm. The rent's too expensive. Yeah. You've got to sit down and say, here's what I want. Here's what I need. And, and is that is that a picture you can go with? If you can't, then um, this hurts. But uh, we can't do this. And it's gonna be it's gonna be dreadful and heartbreaking if if you get hurt again. But better now than than That's getting into this because you're gonna spend your whole life. You're pissed off, right? You're really angry. And I don't want to be that. I know. Wife. I know. I, I want to be sweet. <laughs> I know. I know. But you're you're looking at this and you're going, "This is cray cray," and I can see cray cray a mile away, and I don't want to do it, and it's making you angry. I don't really. I'm not saying I blame you, but no, know, I don't blame you at you're all. You're working awfully hard to make anger sound sweet. But and also, you know, this situation makes you angry, and you keep going back into it. Yeah. So you're gonna have to sit down with him and go, look. If this, I've got to have some boundaries here with you and with your parents for me to be able to function in this. Otherwise, it doesn't feel right to me. I'm not gonna be able to go forward. Is and that you got to. Yeah. And you got to. You got to heal from your old divorce. Yeah. Big time. And if you haven't sat down and and, and with a good counselor. Yeah, with a good counselor for sure. But you haven't sat down and, and written your old self a letter. It says, to, your, to you, I got hurt real bad. And just lay that stuff out there because your body's still trying to solve for it. Lay it out there and say, here's what I want moving forward. And if this guy isn't that guy, then that, so be it. There's mm-hmm. going to be somebody else out there. It's a mess. So... Thanks for calling, Virginia. What's the probability, John, that um, that it's uh, her woundedness that uh, he's probably th- that he could be thinking real clearly that he's going to be have good boundaries with his parents? 
and but her woundedness has just got her freaked out about it. The possibility. I think of if she otherwise. is, she's so terrified that if I say exactly what I need, if I put my boundaries down, he might go. Yeah. And she's experienced that loss before, so she's willing to give up her integrity, who she wants to be. She doesn't want to be an angry person. She said, "I want to be a sweet person." Yeah. She's given all that up because she doesn't want to get left. This is the Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save 40% off selected products. Visit Blinds.com today for more info. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Christopher and Kelly are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? How are you? Hi, great. Good. How are you? Better than we deserve. Well, come. where do you live? Uh, just north of Orlando, Florida, in oh. Leesburg. Yeah, fun. Welcome to Nashville. And how much debt have you guys paid off? $459,000. Woo! How long did this take? <laughs> Six and a half long years. <laughs> I love it. And your range of income during that six and a half long years? Uh, about 100000 when we started, and we're just over 200000 now. Phenomenal. What do you all do for a living? I own my own business. Mm -hmm. Doing what? Animal transport, mostly dogs. Oh, cool. <laughs> Oh, and I'm a senior risk manager for, manager for a large entertainment company. Ah, very good. Good for you. Oh, I'm in Orlando. Imagine that. Okay. Mm, yeah. yeah. Welcome to Nash. Oh, good, 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 good. So, 459,000, six and a half years. That's your mortgage? Yes. yes. Look at that weird yeah! people. Way to go, guys. <laughs> Way to go, you two. What's this house worth? Uh, $493,000. Very good. And how much is in your retirement account? 300000 All right. Almost millionaires. Get yeah. this close. <laughs> Just this close. Okay. So what started you guys on this Ramsey stuff six and a half years ago? Uh, well, it's our second marriage for both of us. But uh, when we started our marriage together, we were still separate. Uh, so if she had her money, I had mine. Um, uh, their bills were paid separately. I did the mortgage. She did the utilities. And we were happy, <laughs> for the most part, uh, <clears throat> in love. But it got to the point where, in my previous marriage, there was still a contest over who would pay my ex's lawyer fees. And the court decided it was my responsibility to pay for those fees. And I said, don't agree with that. So they set a hearing. I blew off the hearing. And two weeks later, I was in jail for contempt. <laughs> well. So that was my I had it moment. Uh, <laughs> sitting in jail alone going, how did it go from being a naval officer and a pilot to this guy? I don't like this guy. <laughs> and I was about to lose her because she had no idea that was going on. I didn't tell her. Oh. Yeah, my mom actually gave us Financial Peace University or gave it to him and said, I think he needs some help with his finances. Yeah. So here's the And when the you're class. in jail, you got time on your hands. Right. <laughs> Seven <laughs> luxurious days in jail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my nothing, God. Nothing is better than that call, Kelly, home to your mom. Like, hey, you know that guy I've been telling you about? He's yeah. in jail. He, yeah. yeah, she was actually visiting.
visiting at the time. Of course in she Florida. was. Yeah. Of course oh, she was. Way to go, Christopher. You go big, man. Yeah. <laughs> you go big. Yes. Not the favorite son-in-law. <laughs> so, uh, yes. man. Okay, so that says a. I can't. T- I can't keep things from her financially. Mm-mm. And B, uh, we need to get on the same page. And C, we got to straighten this whole mess up. Yes, absolutely. And we started in April of 2016 with your DVD FPU mm-hmm. at a church, and I was furious because they're like, "I got to work all day, and now I got to drive to a church at six o'clock at night <laughs> and watch a show about money." And I'm already embarrassed. You know, I was already mm. scared. And I didn't like you when I first met you mm-hmm. on your class because mm-hmm. you kept pointing out how stupid I was. And mm-hmm. I wasn't feeling it that. Was really per- <laughs> it was really personal. Yeah. Right. Every now and then, Kelly would look at me like, mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Go home with your ribs bruised from her elbow. Yeah. yeah. Right. But I think it was the sixth lesson when you said you, if you do this, you might be that person that could pay somebody's light bill without them knowing it. Yeah. And when I heard that, I thought, wow, you know, I want to be that guy. I don't like being the broke guy. I want to be that guy. So then your was, whole life has been a life of service, right? Yeah. That's who you are. Yeah. But, uh, I wasn't paying attention. (laughs) Nothing I did was intentional. It was just reactionary, and I thought I could out-earn. I always made enough money. I can do this. I can win by making more money, and that's not true. You you can't. you got to get rid of the stuff that's in your way. And now I know what peace really feels like. Yeah, and, see, and so you knock out the other debts. You get you get the attorney's fees gone, obviously, mm-hmm. you uh, or you wouldn't be here. And <laughs> and uh, you get on the same page. And six and a half years later, your house is paid for, and you're almost millionaires. Yes. Correct. Yes, we actually hired a lawyer. Neither one of us liked, but he did have the heart of a teacher. And he was like, "You need to listen to me right now because signing lifetime alimony. What the heck were you thinking?" Uh-huh. So he kind of got another thud from him because he was former Navy Jag. He's a Navy so. Jag, so he was. I was a lieutenant in the Navy. He was a captain. And he was just. I was like, "Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir." <laughs> right. Like, How did you do this to yourself? I'm like, I don't know, sir. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> but uh, but following your plan uh, really did it. it it really works. It's it's a miserable baby step two when you owe that much money. Yeah. Baby step six felt like baby step two to me because yeah. <laughs> I really hated that mortgage. But when I got the email that said, we're sad to see you go, I was like, I'm not. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out. No, nope. Kelly, great. But I, I mean, this had to be scary. It was. It really like was. Like, you smile real big, but, like, you hung in there. Oh, yeah. What kept you in there? This is scary. Yeah, it, honestly, like, looking at, it looking back looks, on it now, so. <laughs> and the fact that there was this other person in his life, they had three children, they were in their 20s, but I'm looking at it going, okay, well, I, my marriage didn't work out, and now I'm with this guy, and, you know, the love of my life, and I'm super excited about our relationship starting out. A couple of years in, this happens, and I'm like, oh my gosh. And of course, my parents are like, run, yeah, run, yeah. you know, <laughs> you don't need this, you gotta go, you know. Too much bad. So, I mean, but I honestly, when we, you know, I, I honestly prayed about it, and I was like, you know, God, if this is my, my guy, my man, I'm standing by him no matter what. And we got through this, and I'm like, we can get through absolutely anything. Amen. I mean, it's just, it's been great. Well it's done. Been awesome. Yeah, so. very well done. Okay, yeah. now when people ask and they say, gosh, you paid off your house. You're almost baby steps millionaires. You did it all in six and a half years. And not to mention all the attorney stuff's off your back, all that stuff. Yeah. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Really to follow the steps. I mean, they're one through seven for a reason. Go start at the first one and work your way through. And it does get tough, but like you said, you can you can stop after baby step three and kind of pump the brakes a little bit, take a bit of a break, take a little vacation, support the win mm-hmm. of getting through those first three steps, and then just, you know, move on. I mean, we were, we were in baby step three. We were getting ready to go on the cruise with mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, mm-hmm. pandemic hit, but we had the emergency fund. We had everything in place, and it was really, really a great blessing. Yeah. So. I have the mother of all budgets on my computer. <laughs> so we get paid weekly. And so I have a 52 week budget. And when the pandemic hit, I just zeroed out both of our incomes and I went, ah, oh, we're good. We'll be all right. Wow. All we, have, all we had was a house payment and a light bill and a cell phone bill. And I was like, yeah, we're going to be fine. So for us, it wasn't an event. It was like you said, an inconvenience, yeah. but we were, we were happy. Yeah. Wow. And for everybody listening whose spouse is really excited about the monthly budget meeting, 
Christopher makes poor Kelly have a weekly budget meeting, so <laughs> count your blessings. In case you didn't figure it out, she's the free spirit. <laughs> and when I turned the computer around, she just said, I can't. No, no, I can't. I just can't. How I can't about go next there. month? Well, right. I like Hit it. me up next month. Very cool. Or next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well done, you two. Proud of you. Thank How's you, it babe. feel to be 100% free? No payments of any kind. It changes how I see things. I, I didn't know what to expect. I thought it was going to be this weird, euphoric something when I paid off the house. When we paid off the house together, we would just start floating or something, but nothing <laughs> happened. And I thought, well, that's weird. But Kelly pointed out, well, we planned to do it, so it's not a surprise. We said we'd, we actually were projected not to pay off our house until June of 2024. Mm. And we just pushed it harder and pushed it harder and I wanted to shout out to our FP or our financial advisor uh, who's one of your recommended mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Ackler because he yeah. was my accountability person on the house so he would I wish I didn't ask him to do that I said well you, someone needs to call me on this house payment thing because I'm going to want to do something else with the money because <laughs> I'm the spender and he said okay and so he started calling me every month how's it going whoa <laughs> I like this guy right <laughs> hey good job you two very Thank well you. done hey we've got the live and give bundle for you the baby steps millionaires book the total money makeover book and the financial peace membership Christopher and Kelly from Orlando Orlando, Florida. <laughs> 459,000 paid off in six and a half years from 100 to 200,000 income. House and everything! Mm -hmm. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt free! free. Yeah. yeah! Yeah! Whole different get out of jail free card. This is The Ramsey Show. Guys, if you want to help us out here on the show, we would appreciate it. There's a couple things you can do. One is you can click the follow or subscribe button if you're on a podcast or on YouTube. Uh, click the share button or share a link or tell people where you're listening. If you're listening on talk radio or watching on YouTube or TBN, tell people to join us here. We would appreciate that. Also, leave a five-star review. One stars don't help. Mama said if you had not got anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Just move on. We'd love to have you do that. So share it. Follow it, the show that is, and uh, leave us a five-star review. Hey, let's do a little mental exercise. Look ahead out there with me 90 days. It's July. You got a 1000 bucks in the bank. Two of your credit cards are paid off that aren't right now. No payments. You check out at the grocery store, you don't have a panic attack. How would all of that feel? Uh, like the starting steps of financial... Peace, two words that don't go together like airline service. Yeah, some of you have never had that feeling in your entire life. But you can, for the first time ever, maybe, or maybe for a new time, get control of your money. It starts with Financial Peace University. It's our nine-week course. It's helped over 10 million people beat debt, build wealth, and become outrageously generous. The average graduate pays off $5,300 in debt and saves $2,700 in 90 days. That's an $8,000 change in 90 days. That's a good deal. Financial Peace University. Check it out. RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. Adam's in Chicago. Hey, Adam, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Good afternoon. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So my mom is facing a foreclosure and is asking me to lend her $50,000 to stop this. And we do not have much time. Uh, I'm looking for uh, to get some a, dis a different perspective on how to proceed with this and what I should do. Wow. $50,000? She's behind on her payments? Yes. Uh, let me give some how much is How much is her monthly payment? 
Uh, her monthly payment, I believe, is about a thousand dollars. Now she's not paid have... a payment in four years. She has a mortgage. And Didn't exactly sneak up on her, did it? No, it did not. It did not. Why has she not paid a payment in four years? I thought this was going to work. She's been making a monthly payment on a HELOC uh, with a balloon payment. The, it reached its maturity date, and then it was all due at once. Oh. And she did not have the funds. So this is she's not behind on her payment. She has a balloon on her HELOC. Yes. Oh, okay. That's not nearly as irresponsible, but close. Okay. Wow. All right. So what's the house worth? House is worth around $300,000. And what is the first mortgage amount? Uh, I do not have that much Roughly. information. I believe it's around 200000 with this other HELOC at around ninety to 100000 so she's, I, I, I thought you said it was 50000 to pay it off. She's asking me to lend her 50000 She will up put up uh, 40000 Oh, so she has a $90,000 HELOC. Yes. That's, that's called on a balloon. Yes. And her first mortgage, you, you think the two hundred includes that? So you think her first mortgage is 110 That'd be about right. I, I believe that's the scenario. She hasn't shared all of the information or been transparent. Yeah. Well, transparency kind of comes with that request for fifty grand. I agree. So, um, so uh, can this, you give her fifty grand? Do you have fifty thousand dollars? Yes, that's all that I have. Okay. So that's why it's fifty. Yeah. Um, how old is your mom? Uh, Thirty-nine. How old are you? Twenty-five. She had you when she was 14? Uh, no. You said 39 and 25. 40, 40, 44, my apologies. She's 44? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. I'm just trying to catch up here because that, that, my math my math brain went nuts there for a second. How'd you get um, 50,000 bucks at 25? That's impressive. Saving it. Okay. Now um, I work full time. Do you have any idea how long this has all been going on with your mom? Yes, I believe last year is when she w began to become aware of the situation. Uh, she has put it off and not made progress. Have they then started they began, the foreclosure proceeding? She went into forbearance, and that's where we are now. We are ending the forbearance. We aren't. And, she is. Correct. Correct. You aren't in this. Correct. Right? She's uh, in so forbearance, and forbearance just simply means she's paying payments uh, so that they don't foreclose. So they've not started foreclosure. What state is she in? Illinois. And why is, is she unable to get a, another home equity loan to pay this one off with a different bank? No. Why? She has no income currently. Okay. Why isn't she working? That is a great question that I have also asked. Because here's, here's what we're getting at. You hand her $50,000. She pays this thing down. And in 12 months, we're right in the exact same spot. We're not going to have a $90,000 balloon, but she doesn't have a job. She doesn't have any way to keep paying the mortgage she already has. Like there's, there's a pattern here yeah. that's not sustainable for her in her life. And uh, the question is, are we just giving a drunk a drink, or are we really helping someone get sober for the last time? And that's the question you always want to ask yourself. And um, I think you're giving a drunk a drink. I don't hear anything in this pattern right now that indicates she's going to do anything. There's nothing in this pattern that is responsible. So if I were advising your mom and she came to me and told me her story, um, I would tell her to sell her house before it gets foreclosed on it so, needs to it needs to go on the market this week with a good real estate agent you can find one at elps endorsed local providers people we endorse in your neighborhood uh, that are high octane high protein at ramseysolutions.com you need to sell this she needs to sell this house she can't afford it she doesn't work she is. She does not want to sell this house. I it's a two-unit apartment, and she wants to live in one. And doesn't. I don't really care income. what she wants. She's asking her child for fifty thousand dollars. 
And no, you can't give her fifty thousand dollars. Absolutely, uh, not. that is true. I will advise her to that. Um, ultimately, I've tried to talk with her, and she seems that the she's going to take it all the way to the last uh, day yeah. of this. And that's not, and there's process. nothing you can do about that. We all have people that we love that do stupid things, and you, and it hurts you to watch them do things that are hurtful to themselves. You cannot control her actions. And it is not your fault if she chooses to do that. She has options. She has had options like get a job. She's had options like refinance this before her credit got bad while she had a job and get rid of this balloon. She had options like not taking out the home equity loan in the first place. She has options now like selling the house. All of these are much better options than going to your own son who's 25 years old and asking him for $50,000. Right. So let me ask you this. Okay. You're not married, are you? No. Okay. Um, can you, I don't, I don't know if you can get your head around this, but if you were married and you had a little boy and 25 years later, can you imagine asking your own little boy for $50,000 because you can't seem to get your crap together? I can't even imagine. No, I, I can't imagine, imagine doing that. that. I can't imagine doing that. I might ask Deloney for money, but I'm not asking one of my kids for money. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. I, could, I couldn't. Either. I, I mean, I just, there's something there's something broken here, man. My son went to buy something the other day at Sonic, and he said, "I, I just I'll, I'll pay," and I couldn't allow it. Like I, <laughs> it's not his job. It's my job to feed you. You're my son. Yeah, and it's not your job, honey. You're 25 years old. You busted it's your. Not butt. your job to, to, and you busted your butt to have this money, and it doesn't even fix the problem. If you had $20 million extra laying around and you wanted to give her $50,000, you want to give her $90,000, I'd say, well, we can talk about how to do that. But th this is all you've got, and there's just so much ethically and morally wrong with this whole conversation. Please don't do it. Please ask her to sell her house. That's what's good for her, too, by the way. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Dr. John Deloney. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Dr. John Deloney, number one best-selling author and host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, mental health expert, relationship expert, is my co-host today. The phone number here is 888 825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Michael is in San Antonio. Hey, Michael, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hola. Hey, what's From up? Texas. Good to have you, brother. Hey, so, a couple of things. I uh, finished FPU last week. Um, everything's paid off except my house now. Good. So, me and my wife have been working diligently for that. Good. So we're looking at moving out of the city. We found about a little less than 100 acres we want to buy. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good price. But we're hearing a lot of different things. When we talk to a conventional lender, they're saying that we should you know, go ahead and do our construction loan and everything, which bumps the whole loan up about $450,000. Uh, when we talk to just the land loan, there's like, no, just do the land loan, but, you know, know that your down payment is going to be 20%, maybe 15%. Well, in talking with a friend, we were looking at, we're looking at all options. So we looked at a manufactured home option. And at the manufactured home option, which I'm kind of shocked that these homes look as nice as they do, but there's, they have a program where they will go into the landowner, make a cash offer, which is significantly reduced, 
and we'll just say 500000 at this point. And, uh, and then they sell us the land for that cost with the manufactured home. All these people are telling me different things. Some of them have good points. Some of them have bad points. It, it's hard to sift through all of this. Okay. Thoughts? Always have thoughts. I'm an expert on my opinion. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> how old are you? I am 61. Okay. And um, what's your household income? Uh, about 121000 Do you have any money? I'm sorry? Do you have any money? Oh, yeah. You mean like... How I much have, money do you have? I have about, well, I don't know, 75000 that's liquid mm-hmm. that we could use toward the down payment and stuff. That wasn't what I asked. How much money's in your retirement account? Oh... Uh, couple hundred i guess uh, mm-hmm. i'm re- i'm retired from the army i'm a disabled vet mm. thanks for your um, service okay I have so a, you're, I you're married government. and your wife the, your total household nest egg is 200 grand plus 75 liquid correct you own a home now yes okay so if i understand you right you bought uh, or, or you're trying to buy 100 acres that you're going to build a house on correct okay manufactured housings we don't do that's a fancy word for trailer. Okay. And the 100% of them go down in value. Even the nice ones. We want to buy something that goes up in value, which would be a house. That makes sense? It does. So your current house is worth what? Uh, 503000 And what do you owe on it? Two hundred and seventy, maybe. Okay, so you got two hundred there, and you got seventy-five liquid, and this property is four hundred. No, the property is six fifty. Six hundred and fifty thousand. And you're going to put a house on it, so you're going to have a million dollars in this project, and you make a hundred and twenty, and you're sixty-one. Correct. Pretty steep. You know, we, we run the numbers. We don't have any other expenses. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, we owe nothing anywhere. Yeah. Um, except you're about to. Except you're about to be well, $650,000, yeah. $700,000 in debt when the smoke clears on this. I mean, what do you what, I don't like what, what you're saying? Okay, what price, <laughs> what price house are you putting on that? What price house are you going to put on this $650,000 piece of property? I mean, we want to we want to downscale quite a bit to about a two thousand square foot house. What are you going to spend on it to build it? I'm thinking around three. Yeah, and six fifty is like nine fifty, so it's a million dollars minus two seventy five that you got to put down on it, and so you've got a you know what a seven hundred thousand dollar mortgage roughly. Correct. Is that where we end up? Okay. I if you were my dad and we sat down and we're just having chips and queso and trying to figure this out, I would tell you don't do this. You're you're going to carry seven hundred thousand dollars of debt into you the rest of your life. You don't have a way to pay that anytime soon. And you know, I I I don't want to sign you up for debt to die, debt till you die. I don't want to sign you up for that. Um, right. And I, so I, I guess I get to play the part of dream killer here. Because I don't, th- I think your dream. I'm afraid your dream is going to turn into a nightmare. Now, if you were to do this, and I'm telling you, I would not do it. I'm going to ask you, please don't, for the sake of your family and your kids, the stress that seven hundred thousand dollars is going to put on your soul. At sixty-one years old, at sixty-one making, years making old, making one hundred and twenty-one thousand. It's going to take years off of your life. And so, um, please don't. Do it's it's going to be more of a nightmare than a dream when the smoke clears. The only way to do it is just to buy the land. And uh, with a construction loan and build the house. And you're going to put $200,000 down out of the sale of your current house and the $70,000 that you have in an account. So you're going to put $275,000 down um, on the deal. And, um, and a construction loan then on the, house, on the land also has first mortgage position on the land. It's the only way they do them. They don't do a land loan and then a construction loan. They don't do that. Construction lenders want first position. They don't want to be behind the land loan. So they're going to take out the land loan and roll it into the construction loan. That's If you do a land loan, that's what's going to happen. So whoever told you to get a land loan doesn't know what the flip they're talking about if you're going to build a house. 
because you're going to end up with a construction loan to put the house on there and they're going to pay off the land in the construction loan because they want first position. Then the whole thing is going to roll into a permanent final mortgage, a conventional mortgage, 15 year fixed on 700,000 is not going to be a fun payment to make on, um, you know, on $120,000 a year. It's not, it's not going to be a joyful thing. And if you flip that around, Dave, and you say, what do you say he has 200 left to pay off this house? He's got 200000 in equity when he sells his other house. So he's still got 300 left to pay. And then he's got, um, yeah, and he's got seventy five in cash. So 275 is the net cash that's going to go down on this after he sells the house he's currently in. I'd love for him to sell it and then, then downsize, get that sucker paid off, and then vacation like crazy people. Yeah. Yeah, Instead I'd of go buy something else. I wouldn't buy this land. Yeah, no chance. I, I just, I, you can do it if you want, but I, you call me. You made the mistake of asking. And we'll 100% love you enough to tell you what we think we would do if we were in your shoes. Please don't do this. This is The Ramsey Show. week we announced our smart conference weekend is heading heading to the windy city that's right we're going to be in chicago september 15 and 16 all the ramsey personalities me rachel cruz dr john deloney ken coleman george camel jade washaw will be on the stage in chicago to help you change how you think how you behave and help you manage your life all the way around for better you leave with a plan to stop doing stupid stuff with money, jumpstart your career, prioritize your mental health, improve your relationships. In general, if you go to the SMART conference, you're going to be smarter. And you're going to be part of a live recording for the Smart Money Happy Hour podcast with Rachel Cruz and George Camel. And uh, this is a Friday night, all day Saturday event. The uh, There are platinum tickets, super platinum tickets, whatever else. Check them all out. We got only 60 tickets that are going to have dinner after the conference is over with me and all the Ramsey personalities. Pretty cool. And just 60 of your closest friends. Very small intimate gathering, but that's a super Those bright. dinners get off the rails, man. Those are fun. And those are super pricey tickets, too. Yes. So. The bottom line starter, though, if you just want to come general admission, 79 bucks. This will be sold out very quickly. Chicago, 15 and 16 of September. RamseySolutions.com slash events and get your tickets now. The Ramsey Show question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services for over 40 years. Neighborly has an exclusive network of trained local service providers backed by the Neighborly Done Right Promise. So if it's not done right, Neighborly will make it right. Visit Neighborly.com today to learn more. April is Financial Literacy Month all month long. Teachers and students in classrooms across America are taking time to talk about the importance of learning good money skills. So we have a student question for our question of the day. All right. Today's question comes from Bryce in New Mexico. Bryce writes, I understand all the information I'm getting from the foundations and personal finance course I'm doing at school, but I'm still a little scared of the quote unquote real world. What mindset should I have about managing money on my own that will help me feel more confident? I'll let you handle the, 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 the money part of this about the managing money, but I think it's important. We have a culture, Dave, that thinks we can think our way to confidence, that we can stand in front of the mirror and just chant things and they just that suddenly our bodies are going to feel more confident. It's not true. You gain confidence by doing. You gain confidence by practicing, by action, by taking little steps towards something and having little tiny pebbles of success on this walkway. And so I would tell you to start making a small budget and stick to it. And when you stick to it for a whole month, um, stop for a second and note that and be proud of yourself for it and then move on a little bit further. Well, you're exactly right. I mean, this. This, the self-esteem movement has kind of 
gotten out of control yeah. in the last couple of decades. It's like if you just tell people, you're wonderful, you're wonderful, you can't add and you can't read, but you're wonderful. You well, and, and you know the origin of that, right, is they, yeah. they did those studies on the CEOs and they said, hey, all these CEOs who've made it have – they, they believe in themselves. And so then they try to reverse engineer that by just telling a bunch of kids they believed in themselves. Yeah, but you don't, you don't have to really accomplish anything, but you could just <laughs> randomly believe in right. yourself, yes. which is dumber than a rock. I mean, you, you can't have high self-esteem if you can't do math and read. So you need to learn the skills. And the same thing's true what you're you saying. Can't, you can't have confidence if you haven't fallen and gotten back up. You can't have out. confidence until you've done something. You can watch other people ride a book, bo ride a bike. You can uh, watch a YouTube how to ride a bike. But until you ride a bike, you don't have confidence. You're it. not going to have confidence. And until you fall over and scratch your little hands, you're not going to learn to ride a bike. And then get back up. Work. That's confidence. So all of that to say, um, it's normal. And we're not putting you down at all for feeling scared. Actually, that's kind of wise. I'm glad. That's right. Because you're saying, gosh, this is something I've never done before, so it's a little scary. I'm insecure about it. I don't have false confidence because someone said, ta-da, confidence. No, nobody did that. <laughs> doesn't work. And so instead, what you're going to do, the trick I would tell you to do is, is um, in spite of being afraid, go and do the hard things. But uh, that's on one side of the equation is don't be paralyzed by it. On the other side of the equation is, though, don't act like there's no um, – that, there, that, that, that there's no consequences. Right. So, Risk um, is real. You know, back in my generation, they would say, don't bite off more than you can chew. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happens when someone calls here and they've got a $750 car payment and they make $1,000 a month. They bit off more than they can chew. My day, it was, don't let your mouth write checks that your uh, butt, can't, your cash. butt can't cash. That's right. Yeah. And that wasn't the word we used. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, that, that's exactly it's it's the same, right? same thing, though. It's confidence. It's confidence. And so David did not walk up and slay Goliath. He first killed a bear and a lion. So by the time he came against the giant, he knew what he was doing. He actually had skills that were proven. He was not just a cocky, out of control, too much faith and no skills. Right. Uh, God told me he didn't do that. He just walked up there and said, yeah, God told me, but I know I can do it because they said, you know, you're going to go out there and get killed. And he goes, no, I'm not. I killed a bear and a lion. I know it looks like this guy's, who's this uncircumcised Philistine, you know? <laughs> and that's that's what he said, yeah. right? And so uh, it's the same thing. It's confidence based on actually having done stuff. And uh, that, that so that's how you fix it. Take little steps to gain confidence and competence both. And the more competent you become, the more confident you will become and the less fear you will have because your fear is well-founded. Absolutely. Good for you, man. And I can imagine you're in high school and all this, this info is coming at you and all these questions, these questions and, and lessons. It's a lot, man. So good for you. Yeah, there's, there's not an app for your life. Mm. You have to go live it. There's no, there's, no, there's no shortcuts. There's no click on it on your phone and it's all okay. You know, it, you got to go do it. And that's that's the, you know, the downside of having a magic wand in your life, in your hand, your whole life. Mary is with us. Mary is in Oklahoma City. Hi, Mary. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. It's an honor to be talking to you. You too. What's up? Well, um, my question is, uh, or I would like approval to um, buy myself a car that we've been saving up for for about four years. And, so uh, you have the money in a car happy. account that you saved the money for the car? Yes. Okay. How much is in your car account? Uh, we have saved 48000 In your car account? Yes. Okay. How much is in your emergency fund? Our emergency fund has 36000 In addition to the forty eight. Correct. Okay. And how expensive a car are you wanting to buy? Well, the dealership oversold us, and it's going to be about fifty-seven thousand. Fifty-seven thousand. Well, hold on. They I thought you said you had forty-eight. Yes. What do you mean they oversold you? Well, um, we've been trying to get this car for about six months now, and one finally popped up, and walk away. It was walk cool. away. Don't do it. Walk away. You can't afford it. Don't do it. You don't have the money. Mm. I know, I know, I know. Just don't do it. Don't do it. We've been working so hard for it. I know. Aww. I know. What's your household income? One sixty-six. Okay. And what's your net worth? 
Uh, it's uh, without the house, it's four hundred. More debt. Uh, uh, yeah, we're oh. debt free right now. Okay, what's the house worth? The house is part of your net worth. Six fifty. Okay, so you're millionaires. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you can afford to buy a car that's fifty seven thousand. But I don't think you want to buy this car that's 57000 I think you want someone to tell you that you're getting screwed. Maybe. They mar- <laughs> they marked this thing. They oversold you? What's that mean? They, they marked it up over sticker? Well, it's a trim level higher than I wanted. Oh, okay. What kind of car is this? Toyota Sienna. We've got a two-year-old son and um, one on the way. Corolla will do just fine. Oh, I mean... Uh, uh, Sienna's the van, right? Yeah. Correct. That's a wonderful car. It's a great 57, car. 57000 Okay. Um, so, no, I mean, you just haven't found the car that you want yet. Because you have a $48,000 budget to buy a car, and you decided that, right? And, you know, mm-hmm. they didn't oversell you. You almost overbought. You almost overbought. Yeah, don't blame them. Go yeah, get a Highlander. You can get a Highlander for forty five. They're great or, or go buy a slightly used one, one of the two. You, I'm okay if you got a million-dollar net worth buying a new car. As long as your total of all your cars doesn't equal more than half your annual income. This one's forty eight or 50 And... Um, your income's 166, so as long as the other car is not more than 30, you're okay doing this deal, but not this deal because you don't have $57,000. You just, you, you, you got to say no and go do what you want to do and not what they want you to do. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions, right on the debt-free stage, is Cody and Emily. Hey, guys, how are you? Good, Good. how are you? Better than I deserve. Where do you live? Reynoldsville, Pennsylvania. Cool. Welcome to Nashville. And how much debt have you guys paid off? Um... $138,291.03. Excellent. How long did this take? Five years and 11 months. Five years, 10 months, 23 days. All right. And your household income during that time range? It started out at $71,835.35 to... $124,687.16. $124,687.16. What do y'all do for a living? Bro, you count pennies, man. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> like, uh, we went, uh, sorry. Um, I'm a child care provider. Yeah. Okay. I'm a mechanic for the Department of Defense and uh, Army Reservist. Okay. Thank you for your service. Thank wow. You. What kind of debt was this $138,000? It was um, 40000 was... Her student loans, and mm-hmm. then ninety-eight thousand was our house. You paid off your house. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Looking at weird people. <laughs> yep. Very cool. What's this house worth? Um, I'd say one hundred fifty. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Good for you guys. Well done. Thank you. Thank How you. old are you two? Thirty-six. And yeah, and I'm thirty-four. And you have paid for a house. Yep. <laughs> None of your friends that age do. Nope. No. <laughs> That's pretty stinking cool. Yeah. Way yeah, to go, you. guys. All right. What happened five years and 11 months ago that put you on this Ramsey stuff? Um, we got married in 2015. Um, my mom, she got us FPU for a wedding gift. Mm-hmm. And then uh, that was, yeah, 2015. And then we didn't get FPU until 2017. And I... Oh, I sat around for two years. Uh, And when she first gave it to me, I'm like, great gift. Uh, Thanks, thanks, Mom. I really appreciate that. Um, But then I started talking to a guy at work, and then he said, there's a radio show. So I started listening to a radio show. I worked uh, as an outside salesperson, so I would um, get in a truck, and I'd turn on the radio station listen to you, and I started making sense. Um... And I came home and told it to her. I said, this sounds like maybe we should do this. 
Um, What'd you say, Emily? I was really negative. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted nothing to do with you, honestly. <laughs> How come? Why? How come? <laughs> I just, it didn't sound like it would work. She... I was just not even open to it at all. And she, yeah, she had her own way of doing a budget. She did everything for us. She still does everything for us. Uh, but she had her own way. And I said, I need to start getting in on this. Um, so I said, here's the Every Dollar Budget app. She said, no, I have this. I said, but this way we can both look at it and we can be on the same page. And uh, so fighting and fighting about We're both it and, stubborn. Yeah. It's, my way is always better than his. His is always better than mine. So, so what, brought you, what got you around, it, Emily? Um, after the first class or two, I would say. Oh, I you was went to the class? To, yeah. You actually went. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In All 2017, right. we started going. So then, you started seeing that you might. You thought it might work after yeah. all. Yeah. I only went to the class because it was gifted to us. Yeah. <laughs> and because he wouldn't shut up about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cody, are you, are you, I, I, are you a schemer? Do you always have a plan? Like, uh, hey, what if we do this? I say She's so. like, yeah, yeah. I say so. <laughs> so this sounded like another one, Avon one more thing. Yeah. Some, hey, uh, honey, we're gonna sell essential oils, and <laughs> except this time it was Dave Ramsey, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. But then you get in the class, you start seeing it for yourself. Yeah, yeah. right. Very right. cool. Very cool. How's it feel to be completely free at 34, 36 years old? Amazing. <laughs> it feels great. Um, we was it worth the sacrifice? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, we so our journey was we did you know the baby steps um baby steps two uh we got finished up in 2018 it was february 2018 yeah. emma was born um and so we were saving up we weren't we weren't uh putting in a monthly payments we were saving that up and emma was born nothing nothing medically was wrong we smacked it down on there and mm -hmm. we were consumer debt free yeah and then uh we went through three, four, five, you know, and the rest of them. And then last year, uh, beginning of last year, like we got like $60,000 left on our house. I said, we could kick this out in a year, a little over a year. So I started working all those apps you can download on your phone, you know, Uber, all that good stuff. Grocery delivery was a big one for me um, that made me money, but... Uh, I would leave at 6.30 in the morning. Um, I wouldn't get, get home like, until like 11 because um, I'd be out there. Emily, you on board with all that? It was rough, but it was worth it. You can see it the was, house yeah. getting knocked out, right? Yeah. Right. And now he's home and we have him every yeah. evening, every weekend. So. <laughs> now Emily's like, <laughs> now hey, put him uh, to work. Some, some people probably need some groceries delivered. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was rough for, for a little bit. Um, there was a in july i was just worn down I'm like man this is is it just one year of my life i can get this done and never have to do it again um it was a nice sunny day out the kids were out playing and cody we call him fella um cody jr he said dad you got to go back to work i said yeah i got to go back to work and he said why and he was all sad and pouting on the seat there. I took, I snapped a picture with my phone. And I said, "This is why I'm doing this." Mm. So it's mm. awesome. Man. So I never have to do it again. Exactly. Yeah. Way to go, guys! Congratulations. Very proud of you. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? I'd say um, doing a budget um, and that, working uh, together. You have working. to be on the same page. Yeah. Make a make a goal. Well, first dream. Mm -hmm. Have that dream. This is, this is our dream right here. Well, my dream, she might not be her dream, but this is to be standing right here. Yeah, wow. <laughs> but that's just, this it. is my dream. Yeah. So make that dream and then create that goal and work mm -hmm. towards that goal. Very cool. Good for you guys. Well Emily, what do, you, what do you tell the husbands and wives out there that are just rolling their eyes when their spouse comes with another scheme? <laughs> just be open to it. Listen, maybe even try it a little bit. <laughs> um, you never know. The Nine might times out of ten, he's right. <laughs> oh, well, there's that. Well, you good. said that like, oh, it hurts so yeah, much. Yeah, he does. <laughs> that's, better. that's better than me, Cody. I'm not even that good. Yeah, that's good. Way you, to go, you guys. You celebrate that one out of ten, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Hey, we've got the Live and Give bundle for you, the Baby Steps Millionaires book, number one bestseller, and you guys are on your way to be millionaires, uh, the Total Money Makeover book, and, of course, uh, another Financial Peace University membership. You'll be able to give those to somebody and help them on their journey or enjoy them yourself, whatever you need to do. All right, Thank bring you. the kiddos up and tell us their names and ages. This year's Emma. She's five. 
Mm-hmm. This year's Cody Jr. We call him the fella. Mm-hmm. He's three, and that's Colton 17. All right. Way to go, guys. Very good stuff. Excellent, excellent work. All right. It's Cody, Emily, Colton, Emma, and Cody Jr., and 138000 paid off. House and everything, five years and 11 months, making 71 to 121. Lots of extra hours. Got her done completely free at 34 and 36 years old. Pretty stinking amazing. Well done, guys. All right, count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're we are debt-free! Debt free! Way to go, you guys. Man, I'll tell you what. If you're out there wondering if you can do it, you can do it. You can do it. it it's painful when your little one looks at you and says, Daddy, why are you leaving? Mm. But there's, that was I, I've never even heard that or thought of that. That's that's That was wise. I'm going to take a picture, and I'm going to keep this thing close to me so I can see it. That's why I'm doing this. I remember later yep. that we paid a price to win. That's right. And uh, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a decade mm-hmm. of overwork. One year. It was one year. One year. And we're free. We're free. Free. Never have to do it again. Mm -mm. So the weird thing is, if you don't do it right, you get to do it over. That's right. That's right. But now you can go to all the baseball games. You can go to all the dances. You can go to all the rehearsals. Don't miss a thing. You can be a dad. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Proverbs 22, 29. Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. Calvin Brodus Jr., a.k.a. Snoop Dogg, said, "It's flipping hamburgers. If it's flipping hamburgers at McDonald's, be the best hamburger flipper in the world. Whatever it is you do, you have to master your craft. Whew. It's true. It is amazing. If you become the best at something... Uh, whatever it is, you see a man skilled in his work, he will stand before kings. I struggled at uh, fielding ground balls as a kid. I was a good pitcher and I was a good hitter, but I struggled with fielding, gr- fielding ground balls. And I remember at a young age, my dad said, if you can hit, they'll find a place on the field for you. And there's this like, if you will focus on something and get really, really good at it. They'll stand before kings. They'll figure it out for you. That's right. Alex is with us in Norfolk, Virginia. Hi, Alex. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, uh, thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Yeah, so I had a uh, investing question. I guess where to where I should be allocating uh, where I'm putting my investments in. Um, so I have a I'm in the military, so I have a TSP that I've been doing 15% into, and then I've had an IRA that I've had that I haven't really added because I've been doing the TSP, which is Roth, both of them are uh, Roth. And then I had a taxable account that I've been uh, also putting money into in addition. Uh, with a thought process, thought process of that being a uh, like a down payment for a house at some point. I don't Good. know when that would be. Good. Um, so I just didn't know should I, because I don't. I do plan on getting out of the military in about two years. Uh, mm-hmm. Currently working on my degree, mm-hmm. so it should be better since I'm transitioning out to put that in the IRA. Um, Doesn't matter. Should I be put in? Doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean the only the only advantage the Roth IRA would have over the Roth TSP is you might have mutual funds that would outperform some of your TSP selections. And gotcha. uh, that was kind of what I was looking yeah, at. by far the C plan in the TSP is the best. We tell folks to put eighty percent in that, ten percent in the S, and ten percent in the I. Don't do any yeah. of the auto adjusted garbage. Yeah. Okay. 
Just just pick C for most of it. C out is a common stock plan. It models the S and P five hundred, and it outperforms everything else in the TSP spades all over the place. The S yeah. is small company, and you just the only reason I'm putting ten percent in there is because it's really volatile. It's up and down, but some years it has an incredibly good year. The I is the international, and the only reason I'm putting some in there is so you don't have all your money in the U.S. economy only, in terms of your investments. And so uh, it, I'm trying to model based on the the production of those funds or those indexes in there. Uh, you know, what we would do otherwise. Now, if you go out into a Smart Investor Pro and sit down, you don't get a match, do you? Uh, it's a 5%. Okay, you got to do that before you do anything. Because yeah. 5% free money is free money. You're going to do that. I'm assuming you're debt-free and have your emergency fund in place, right? Uh, correct, yeah. Good, okay. All right, we were talking like we knew we were on the same page. I am making sure we were. All right, so you're doing great, man. How old are you? I'm uh, about to turn 20. 20? What? What thought, branch of the military you serve in? Gosh. Uh, Coast Guard. Thank you. I had a Coast Guard trainer sitting out here in the lobby. Yeah, I was just talking to him in a, at the break. Yeah. He's in town doing that. So very cool. Well, hey, so thank Alex, you. Thanks for your service. Hey, this is going to be hard, and, th and it's going to be counterintuitive for you. Um, this is the easy part for most of us mortals, is you're going to have to make peace with doing the same boring thing over and over again for a long, long time. You're a go-getter. You go knock stuff down. You plan way ahead, and you're going to have to just make peace with, I'm going to put 15% of this account. The, the, the rhythm of automatic. Yeah. Yeah. It's boring, dude. It's boring. If you do that, you're going to be, un man, you're so, way to go, man. I'm so proud of you. That is excellent, excellent stuff. Very, very well done. Yeah. I, I would make sure I get the match, 80% C, 10% S, 10% I, and do that, the TSP and a Roth. And uh, then if you want to do something outside with your SmartVestor Pro, if you want to put some of your money over there to a total of 15% between the two, then you might get four mutual funds, growth, growth and in income, aggressive growth, and international, uh, that that grouping would outperform the CSI. You should be able to actually get funds that do outperform those. But that's not going to be the secret. The secret is that you're freaking 20 years old and you're brilliant. You are the secret sauce of success in your life. It, it, you, you know what to do, and you're not you're not going to mess this up. Uh, Joyce is with us in Phoenix. Hi, Joyce. How are you? I'm fine. I do have a quick question I'd like Dave to comment on. Um, the housing market here in Phoenix is volatile, and we're looking to sell our house in the next five to seven years. Probably several times a month, we get a postcard in the mail, offer to buy your house for cash. Can it's crap. Don't answer? do it. Okay. Can you explain why? Yeah, because it's, it's people doing flips that went to some TikTok uh, real estate class, and they're trying to buy a house at wholesale and flip it for retail. It, it, you can get a lot more for that house if you put it on the market with a traditional high-octane, high-protein realtor and sell it retail to a family that wants to live in the house. Because investors have to buy below retail in order to sell it at retail and make a profit. I did it for years. Okay, There's nothing right. illegal or nothing even scummy about what they're doing. They're just trying to buy a house cheap. I bought a lot of foreclosures back in my 20s. I bought a lot of estate sales back in my 20s. I went to auctions back in my 20s because in every case, I'm trying to buy a property cheaper than it was actually worth so I could sell it for what it was actually worth. And that's what they're doing. Make sense? Okay. Does that make sense it to does. you? It does. Thank you. Okay. That's how it works. So, yeah, I get those cards too, by the way. Everybody does, I guess. Everybody's got a mailbox gets them probably. So I think that I think you should answer one, Dave. I think that'd be hilarious. <laughs> well, then I'd have to have the guy come to my why would I want to do that, John? <laughs> I don't know. I just think it'd be funny. It's like, it's like <laughs> sure, man, come over to my house. Let's I, talk. I, I just cause I don't have enough to do. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer's in Austin, Texas. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Right quick before we run out of time. Great. How are you? Good. What's up? Real quick question. We have two homes. One we are renovating. We carry two hundred and sixty-five thousand on. Second one we are living in while we renovate. It is paid off. When we move out into our primary residence, 
is it more beneficial to sell that secondary home to liquidate it and put it all in mutual funds for retirement or to pay off our sell it and pay off our homestead and invest the rest? B. I would, I, I, I would pay. Here's the thing. When we studied 10,000 millionaires, we found that the typical path to the first one to five million dollars of net worth is a paid off home, personal residence and mutual funds invested in good 401ks and Roth IRAs. And so I'm always going to have the series of goals where you're putting it baby step four, you're debt free with the emergency fund in place, putting 15 percent of your income away towards wealth building and retirement. Baby step five is kids' college, and six is pay off the house early. When you get the house paid off, then that takes you to baby step seven. There's nothing left to do then but become very wealthy and outrageously generous. And you do that by maxing out your 401ks and maybe paying cash for some future real estate investments after that. Uh, But your first big hurdle is a debt-free personal residence and be aggressively to the tune of 15% of your household income funding your retirement and your wealth building if you'll do that that's the fastest shortest correct way with almost no risk towards building serious serious wealth yeah i like yeah i I just i just can't wrap my head around paying a mortgage on something and uh well i got the money sitting over here and something else to pay it off yeah yeah it's just it seems it seems backwards Yeah. yeah yeah and it it but it doesn't but the it's cult, a, it's the, cult, the soul tax. The culture that's broke teaches you to do that. Right. Well, and I get if, if you a lot just, of noise out if there. you take a yellow pad and you write it down and it's 10% return and yeah. I get 6% here, I can get make four here. There's just a, that 4% is my sleep tax. Yep. I just want to go to bed. Sleep tax. Like yeah. sleep tax. That's better than stupid tax. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks or, to the guys in the booth. Taylor Austin, Swift tax. Ben, James, Zach, and Andrew, the booth dudes, did a great job. John, you too on the, on the show. That puts this hour in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, it's Dr. John Deloney. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.